Fuzzy, where'd you go? I was about to say hello to everybody. That's just your butt. You got a cute little fuzzy butt, though. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Hi, Tobes. Yeah, good to see you, too. Um, can you see it? Is that visible? See what's happening there? How about now? <laughs> um, happy spring, right? What the heck? This not supposed to be doing that. But you know what? It's probably the last one of the year. I'll take it. It's pretty. We're all stuck in the house. Not quite nice enough to do yard work yet. So, okay. Oh, it is actually really, really pretty though. Well, it's been a few days. The weather's been all over the place. We had that snow like you just saw. And then it was like in the 50s and pretty pleasant. And then it stormed and rained and then it cooled off. Then it got warm. It's absolutely beautiful today. It's actually, I think it's only like 68 or 70 something, but I'm hot. It's humid and my body's not used to it. It's not the same as when I'm, when I'm in the bubble, I, the humidity, it gets hot and I get shiny, but not like today. It's very muggy. So I left off last week with um, a car full of plants and I said we'd talk about it this week and there's not like I didn't get a ton okay I kind of did over the past few weeks really last weekend and then like the first week of March I've had things coming in the mail and then I had a trip to Lowe's a few weeks ago before started staying at home but I mean I've been at home but like the one of the four times I've left the house <laughs> this month I ran by Lowe's and there was nobody else there and I picked up some annuals and then everything else has been delivered i placed my plant orders in like january so they're rolling in and i'm not i'm paranoid about it those are empty by the way those are plants that have already been unboxed but uh they had packing peanuts in them and i decided to save them so i could use those if i needed something for drainage or something and some pots but here's a look at there's a palm tree that i don't know what it is though there's no label that nursery it was all from greenscape gardens greenscape nursery here in st louis um before before the mandatory shutdown of everything they're still doing like a you can call them and they'll walk you through what they have and then you can go like drive through style pick it up for me i'm trying to stay at home so that was kind of like my last little hurrah and really my first hurrah of the year which was fun so they've had this palm tree though since last year and every time i've seen it i've been like i really like that it's really pretty i mean i think it's the same one that they had had for the last year it it, it doesn't matter i still like it just the same it's on its side because um it kept falling over so i just left it there it's like why bother picking it up it's gonna keep falling over so it needs to get into a fresh pot I, it looks to me to be some sort of bamboo palm something in that realm in that family some type of it's not your typical bamboo palm these columns the trunks are much 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 more thick on here than on a typical like sofritzii or microspatics type of bamboo palm so i'm not really sure but i like it and i'm interesting interesting i'm interested to see what that looks like as it grows. I also grabbed an Alpinia Zerumbut variegata, the variegated shell ginger. They have a whole bunch of them. I uh, have plenty from last year that I had cut back, but those take a while to get going again. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those. My main thing, it wasn't even that I was like, oh, I really want plants. It was that this is a locally owned nursery. They've always been so good to me. Everybody who works there is really kind. And uh, it just was, it broke my heart to know that I hadn't really been able to get out there yet because they only opened up March 1st. And I had some stuff going on with my shoulder that I had talked about in a previous vlog. Uh, so it was like the first chance I really had to go out and get some plants. I just really wanted to support them before the city shut down. That's what I did here. I went ahead and I just grabbed a bunch of stuff. I wasn't even too picky about it. I got the palm tree the ginger there is a flat of sun impatience down here which these are my favorite sun impatience these are the neon rose or deep rose can't remember compact deep rose this they're thirsty everything's very thirsty my hose is broken hopefully i'll have time in this vlog to get that fixed because I need to you can see everybody needs water the flowers not that there's really anything to show right now they're all pretty faded but the flowers are like a neon coral. I don't even know how to describe it, but what I can say is that when they are in bloom, 
it is impossible to get a good picture or video of what they actually look like. Which is very frustrating because I always want to show them to people and be like, look at how pretty it is. And you take a picture and it's just, it doesn't do them justice. But I got a whole flat of those. I usually put these in different pockets around the garden. Sometimes I'll put them in some pots that go around my swimming pool. And typically I go through way more than just a flat. But I figured, hey, this is better than nothing. Because who knows what gardening and nurseries are going to be like this year. So I'm happy to have those. And over here, Cordel and Fruticasa. This is um, Kiwi. One of my favorites. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's kiwi. It doesn't actually have a label on it, but it looks like the kiwi to me. They're really cute. I had a few of these last year and I brought them in to overwinter them and they just, they weren't doing too hot. So I gave them the boot because they were kind of becoming high maintenance and they were getting scraggly and the pests in my little grow area back here, they love the cordal and fruticasas. And it was one of those things where I was like, I don't love it enough to keep it around and have bugs that deal with all the time. So that's, that's, so I got a new one. And I also grabbed a hibiscus. Things are like literally just thrown around out here in the driveway right now. I'm in the process of moving them from the driveway to the backyard or into the garage. The forecast is like really sketchy. Like it looks good, but you can see there's potential within the next 10 days for some like upper thirties weather. So I'm trying to kind of keep things that are going to be delicate closer to the garage so I can just pull them in should that happen. But anyways, hibiscus, this is, I believe, a seminal pink. It's The flowers are a little bit smaller right now, so it's hard to tell, but it looks like a seminal pink to me. And then an Enset Morellii Red Obsidian Banana. These are fantastic. One of my favorites. Look at the foliage. Look at that. You see? Look at how gorgeous that foliage is. And they just, it's a banana. They grow like insanity. They grow so, so, so quickly. This will be really big. Even by the end of the year, probably by like August. It'll be a really big, big plant with a nice girthy trunk. They mostly, their trunk stays stout and thick, but they have gigantic leaves. And if you live in like zone eight, even really warmer zone seven, worth giving a try. They don't sucker like other bananas do. So if it doesn't make it through the winter, <laughs> it's gone and toast. But they can die back and come back up from the ground if they're mulched heavily and situated in a warm spot. Uh, probably not here in zone six, but like I said, though, if you're in zone seven, B eight, somewhere in there, it might be worth giving a try. Okay. And then here's where things get really chaotic because <laughs> they're just scattered all over this car over here. But, uh, there's two of these new guineas down here. These just like that sun impatient, really hard to get those flowers on camera, but this is the Sonic Salmon, new guinea impatient from Monrovia. And uh, I'd say it lives up to that name. These need to get moved into the shade. It's a pretty overcast day, so they're all right right now. And they should be tomorrow too. These are the uh, bunny violas and the they're in like a series called Magic Scent. They do, they smell very nice. But I mean, violas and pansies usually do have some scent to them, but these, they, it's a little bit stronger, but I don't know if that's like what they're actually bred for. I just got them because I like the, I thought the flowers were really pretty. There's an azalea over here. This is Autumn Bonfire, an Encore azalea. I grabbed this one because I liked its form. I think that it will be good for doing a, a sort of bonsai kind of thing with. So that's what that's for. Um, that is an extremely thirsty anemone. So I need to get that watered. The hose is broken, but it's been raining, so I wasn't too worried. But I'll go ahead and move this to the back. I have some things I'll show you in the back. Not too many of those, just a few things. This is a patio rose, and I thought the flowers on this were just absolutely beautiful, even with the asphalt in the background. Um, what is it called? Can you see that? Crazy Love, that's the name of this one. The flowers on it seem to actually kind of change as they mature. They start off this really pretty pink coral color that fades into an orange and yellow in the center, and then as they get bigger, and they start to open up, that color lightens an awful lot. It's kind of fun having that change in variety with them. Like, look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. Almost reminds me of one of my favorite roses, which is, um, I think it's a hybrid tea. It's uh, called Cherry Brandy, Cherry Brandy Wine. It's, I've never seen it for sale as a plant, but I see it as a cut flower. It's, oh, it's so pretty. They have giant, giant buds on them that are, uh, kind of like this but it's more dip dip it's more deep rich dramatic tones with the coral on the outside and the orange in the middle 
it is so pretty. It's one of my favorites. And this is kind of like that. Also kind of reminds me of like the Love and Peace. And I think there's one's called like Chicago Peace or it's nothing too unusual, but I liked it and it was cheap. So I have that. I've wanted to get back into roses, but my son is like not great anymore as the trees have grown in my backyard, but having one in a container, I figure I can move that around and chase the sun with it. <laughs> as the seasons change and the angles change, I'll still be able to be able to keep it in bloom because if I plant it in the garden that's not going to go very well when fall or late summer rolls around and there's not as much sun in the backyard then it's just going to get like mildewy and gross that's not going to work there's also a flat of supertunia vista bubble gums here usually go through a lot of those every year and look at these bacopas aren't they beautiful they're just such a nice shade of purple I've been really into like the lighter sort of like creamy purple is how I usually describe it. That's something I've really liked the past few years. And I think that this will look really pretty paired up with, sorry about the shakiness. I think this will look really pretty paired up with maybe even like that Sonic New Guinea Impatient. Although I think the Bacopa would like more sun, but look at how good these look together. Look at that. Okay, again, it doesn't show that well on camera because you can't really see the shade of the impatient, but um, I could probably match that up with some sun impatience or something like that where it'll get more sunlight and have that pretty coral color with this bluey lilac, lavender, whatever you want to call it. I think that that will look nice. You get what I'm saying. It's going to pair up nice with oranges and pinks. I like it a lot. I've already talked about the flight of Clarence Snapdragons last week and then a flight of lettuce here that I was waiting to kind of get it to stiffen back up. When we had the snow, it sort of went blech and fell down. So I've been going through and rubbing it with my hands, trying to sturdy it back up. Because I don't want to put these in the ground when they're limp and weak because they'll just fall apart. But for some reason, it's just, I don't know why. I think it's just like the cutest stinking thing. You might agree too, if you could actually see it. Oh no, see, it's just cute. Like I just kind of want to put it in like a teacup and just let that be it sitting on top of a table somewhere. Just these pretty white and purple flowers. Is this overexposed? Can you see what's going on here? Nah, it's fine. You get it. It's white and purple. There's also some peppermint back here because it's vigorous and I like peppermint. And a verbena that is really pretty. I also got this from Greenscape. The variety is mango orange. And the flowers are fading. It's also thirsty. Why? Are, it rained so much. Why is everything so thirsty? I have to change this to dehydrated plant tour. That's what it's going to be. It's only a few of them, right? It's not that many, but the verbena and some others, I will go fix the hose. <laughs> Get these watered as soon as I'm done uh, going over all these plants. This is another one of those 4D um, African daisies. This one's the 4D purple. The other one I showed in my video that came out just a couple days ago where I pot up the magnolia. So you can see this one's more of a purple color. They have these really neat flowers on them. Aren't those cool? Look at, look at, isn't it neat? I think those are so pretty. Uh, okay, that's everything for back here. Let's go to the backyard now. Oh, and then I also got a couple queen palms. That's what was dangling out the back of the car. Just nice little queen palms. Happy to have those. And for the time being, I've actually been piling my more hardy tropicals up over here so that there's kind of a shady spot to move things over to. So I have an oleander moved out here and then I've got my lemon coral sedums down here that I overwintered and they're starting to kind of wake up. And then, yeah, you guys saw all this stuff. So I guess there really isn't much of an update to give, but I didn't ever tell anyone what the name of this daisy was. And it is the, I told you it was a 4D, but it's called Violet Ice. And I never gave a good close up of the flowers either. It's a neat one, isn't it? There's more than enough here to work with. And I still have perennials from last year that are starting to wake up. So I'm not really too worried about like there being a lack of plants. There's more than enough. I moved my tree fern out and I have that kind of shaded by the other plants. Though there is some, um, who, who are you? What's your name? Labelia over there. Guys, I think that's it. Did I go through that too quickly? I'm sorry, there's rain moving in. So I was like really trying to rush through it all. Okay, so here's what's going on with the hose. And um, I do, I'm just in advance, I'm gonna apologize for the chaos and rushing through this. But like I said, it's gonna start raining. And uh, you know, with St. Louis being on uh, lockdown, shelter in place orders, there are a lot of people outside, which is fantastic, uh, but there's a lot of noise. So I'm just gonna film through it. In years past, I would wait for quiet time, but 
it's just part of being outside. I mean, I, the other day when I felt, when I did this video, it took like six hours because I had to do it in little increments when it wasn't really noisy. And it was just, we're not doing that anymore. I mean, if it's excessively loud, then that's one thing, but you know, there's just, there's just noises that come with being outside and that's okay. Back on topic, a hose. I'm gonna slow things down. I don't wanna stress anybody out with my hyperness right now. So this hose is a one inch garden hose. I got this from Lowe's a few years ago and um, it broke. So here's what happened. This is supposed to be on the end there. So after the first winter I had this, the fitting that was on here got stuck to it and had to use a Dremel to cut it off of this. And that left a tiny dent in the threads here. So from that point and on, this always had a leak. Like anything I had on the end of this, there was always water that would pour out from here. And uh, it was driving me crazy. I was done with it, I was over it, but I wasn't gonna go buy a new hose when I was like, well, I can just change the end of it. But it turns out, no, you can't. Not on a one inch hose. It's not like a typical hose where you can go and get a mending kit. I didn't know that. Since I got it from Lowe's, I was like, well, this must be a typical thing, even though I know they're traditionally five eighths and three quarters. Uh, but I'm stuck on the one inch hose thing because my other hose, which isn't the water's still shut off from winter time, that one's a three quarter inch and the pressure sucks. The pressure from this hose is amazing. I went online to look at ordering a new hose. Um, one, it was really hard to even find a one inch garden hose. When I did, it was like $140. So I wasn't going to do that. And all the others I, I was able to find are considered fire hoses when they're one inch and they're very expensive. Like some of them were over $300. That's no, that's not happening. So what I've done here, where's, wait, hold on. I'm missing something. Never mind, no, I'm not, it's right here. So I had this, this is a one inch barbed fitting that goes out to a three quarter fitting. So that's like the typical size that goes for most hose accessories. I had that in there. I got it on, worked great, had it clamped in place and then uh, it popped off. I The clamps I was using were kind of old. So I did manage to go out into my garage and dig up some newer clamps that aren't all rusted up. So what I'm going to do here is I have this softening so I can get it back onto there and then I will clamp it down and just <laughs> fingers crossed that I will have a functioning hose again. Cause this has been a thing that's been going on for a long time and uh, I'm done dealing with it. And I know it seems stupid. Like why not just go buy a different hose get a three quarter or a five eighth. I just, I believe me, once you've experienced the pressure from a one inch hose, you're not going to want to go back either. It is amazing. Like the things I've been able, I can fill a bucket up so fast. <laughs> it's, stu it's stupid. I'm the, I'm the problem here, but that's okay. I'm aware of it and I can make it work. And why buy a new hose when this will potentially work? I don't know why it wouldn't, except that it didn't before. The water pressure was so strong that even when it was clamped, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna give it a try. We'll see what happens here. All right, there it is. I did manage to get it to stop leaking. So, oh, you didn't even know. So I've tried three different fittings on this fitting right here, three different on off valves to go on this fitting that doesn't want to focus and uh, they've all been dripping. That's why there's plumber's tape on there. I went ahead and I finally just grabbed a wrench and tightened it down as much as I could and that seemed to stop it. And the washers were brand new. I put a new one in just to be safe. So let's go ahead and see if it works. That's what you got to do with one hand. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Yeah, look at, look at, have water again. There we go. Okay, I'm glad to have that done. I'll go ahead and water even though it's, there's like a 90% chance it's going to start raining in an hour. Still, you saw how thirsty those plants were. They need it. And look at that soil. It's bone dry, which is very weird because we've had plenty of rain. And I know you might be wondering like, hey, Jeff, why, why don't you just go turn the hose on at the house? Well, I could. This one connects to my front yard. So it's a pain in the butt to have to do that every single time you water. And um, I still, it seems important to have a fitting on the end because I don't want to just have to hold my thumb over there and blast it on to, to everything. That wouldn't really make sense. I'm going to go ahead and give everyone a drink, a fairly light drink, but I don't know, maybe not too light because I don't want to rely too much on the forecast because they get it wrong so often, like all the time they get the forecast wrong. But at, looking at the radar though, I'd say it's a pretty sure thing that we're going to get some rain. Is this entertaining for you? Probably not. I would understand if you said no. It's just, you know, 
quarantine, lockdown, not much going on to talk about. Oh, that verbena, poor little verbena, she got really thirsty. Now, have to give it a few days to see if this actually worked, because like I said, I did this before, and then it popped off, but the clamps were old, so hopefully this does the trick. Also, new hose nozzle, got it last fall. Maybe it was early winter, I don't know. I've never used it before. The pressure out of that, pretty intense. I mean, look at, look at the lettuce. My bad, they'll be okay. I'm just gonna make them stronger. They'll pop back up, it's not the end of the world. And as I started to talk about earlier, I have been using my cold hardy palms that I've had outside, I mean, for the majority of the winter, the windmills and the mule palms to kind of create sort of a shady area so that when I start to move my tropicals outside, I'll have a place to put them because it's not, even though they're under grow lights, they still need to adjust to bright light. The leaves will bleach out and they will suffer, so they need to go into shade. And I could just order shade cloth, but I just don't really feel like messing with it, to be honest, having to, you know, make sure it's hung up and taut and everything with all the storms we have. This just seems to work okay for me. And it's, there's, there's, it's multi-purpose here, two, two purposes. Shading the plants as I move them out so they can acclimate and I kind of I wanted to create a little bit of a privacy wall everybody's home and everybody's outside which is great but let me tell you it's really awkward filming videos when all of your neighbors are outside it's which I know doesn't probably make a ton of sense because I can go out in public and vlog really without many issues but it's just different when it's your neighbors and my backyard's at the bottom of a hill all these other houses are right above looking down onto my yard so it's kind of like like you feel sort of like you're on stage and it's i don't like it i don't like it at all so that was another reason that i actually rushed i wanted to get this planted up was so i could set it right here just to provide a little privacy between myself and that house and now i have this is i've just i've made a little corner here where I don't feel quite as awkward being outside filming. Maybe a bit much, I don't know, but it's gonna be a while until I have things set up with a nice looking area to film. Not that this, this is by no means a beautiful area, but uh, it's still, I mean, it's not even April yet. So this is probably the earliest I've even had this much outside, which is why did I probably shouldn't have all this out, but it's just been so nice. It's not that much. I can move it back in if we have a cold snap. No big deal, I've done it before. I mean, so far I've only moved things out here that are good into the 40s and even upper 30s. The tree fern, like, might suffer a little bit if it gets, like, mid 30s, but I don't, I don't really care. That plant's been a pain in the butt. If it were to defoliate, whatever, that's fine. It'll regrow and will regrow quickly, actually. So, um... That's how I've been doing things. Anything that needs to stay above 50, that's not coming out right now. Even though it's been nice, there's still a lot of potential for some cold snaps and dips. I mean, heck, it was just snowing here a couple days ago. So I do have to keep that in mind. So it's only the things that can take the cold. The queen palms, they if it we have another cold snap, I'll either toss them to the garage or I'll just lay them down flat and throw a frost cloth on them. That's actually what I did the night I brought them home. That was the night when they were forecasting for the snow the next day. I threw them on the ground in the driveway. The ground was warm, it was sunny that day. I put a frost cloth over them and some extra plastic with some bricks. Took like five minutes and they didn't, nothing. They're totally fine. So I don't have to worry too much about them. My wheelbarrow's broken. I mean, it's not broken, it just needs a new wheel, but that same wheel keeps breaking. I replace it, it breaks. I replace it, it breaks. The tube inside of it just pops. It just pops, 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 pops. Very annoying. Contemplating a gorilla cart. Maybe. They seem really nifty. Like, I feel like I'd get a lot of use out of it, but at the same time, it's something else I have to find a spot for. Okay, I think that's it for my thoughts. <laughs> I think I got it all out. I don't know. <sighs> it, it is nice to be back outside, even if things are messy. Just the way it's going to be for a little while. It's not time to really start planting yet, so I've got what I have here, and that's good for projects. Oh, this is Lobelia. She got really thirsty. I mean, I did, oh, I don't know if I, I feel like it should be obvious, but I took the plants off the car. Cause that's not a good thing to do, right? Cause soil and metal, rust, you don't want to do that. It's, that wasn't a good thing to do. I did a bad thing. Now they're back here and it's okay. What have you guys been up to? Comment down below, say hi, what's going on? What's new? Anything going on with the gardens? It's, you yeah, know, we're all kind of in a place of uncertainty. It's really weird and awkward. I, um, 
I'm happy to have been able to obtain what I have here. There's lots of stuff to work with. Actually got really lucky that the nursery stocked up so early this year. Like usually I mean, lows like the first week of March, they had a ton of stuff, which is not at all normal for where I live. I mean, usually they get like a shipment of like figs in and um, that's about it in early March. And then we have a bad frost and they die and go in clearance. But so far it's been okay. That was just two years in a row. I'm not gonna make it like they always do that. Yes, I know there's a slide back there. Something else I need to pick up. Um, Toby was playing with that and I just, I let him have it because it doesn't fit me anyway. So what the, I'm just, he can have it, he can enjoy. I'm gonna take myself inside and uh, do some things. Nothing very exciting going on for me this weekend. Uh, but uh, I'm actually going to be prepping to start getting some yard work going next week. I don't know how much. I'm trying to take things kind of easy, but um, there will be some things happening out here. Hopefully pretty soon. But like I said, it's still really early. So I got to try and try my best to control myself. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's going beautifully for you. And yes, it still feels very weird saying that considering, you know, pandemic. Don't think I'm not taking it seriously. I am, but we all need to laugh and just relax and let our minds loose. That's what's going on here. I hope you've been able to do that, to relax, let your mind loose every now and then and get a little bit of an escape, something to ease the anxiety. I think that from what I'm observing, it's almost like the nations, nations across the world. It's like there's a grieving process going on with a lot of denial and anger. It's all understand. I'm going through it. I'm sure you are too. But we all in this together. Try and stay at home, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. You stay at home, pumpkin, pumpkin. Acknowledge me. You cute as yes, you are. Just to be safe, stay at home. Where are the dogs? I'm gonna get my desk organized. That'll be fun. These are all receipts. And then receipt org. It's all from 2019 into 2020. YouTube taxes. It's been a fun learning curve there. Hey Tobes, what you doing? Yeah, you good boy. Say hi. You go back to sleep. I'm sorry, Toby. Maybe I'll get the fish tank fixed up in here. The lights up here broke. I had had them for like 11 years so it's not surprising that they well that's that's incredibly loud there's an exhaust fan up there so i took one of my lights off my freshwater tank and put it over here just to hold things over but hasn't been great so i need to figure something out there and get that up and going there's plenty of things to do oh forgot magnolia bloom update they're actually hanging on you like i i mentioned a few weeks ago usually it blooms and buds and then we have a cold snap and they come off, but I think the cold from the snow was brief enough that it didn't really do too much damage to them. They're starting to age and fall off. So they don't normally do. So that's exciting. I'm glad that I got to see some flowers out of it this year and almost it's full glory. Not quite, but almost. Uh, that's right, I was gonna go. If anybody um, has any ideas on this bamboo type bomb, let me know in the comments. To be completely honest, I really haven't even attempted <laughs> to figure it out. I was just like, okay, the person called it a bamboo palm. It's not a typical Sofritzi, Sofritzii or Microspatics. So it's definitely not a Radicans, but there are a lot of different uh, bamboo palm types. So, and at first I thought it was a cat palm. And I was like, no, there's no way cat palms aren't as elongated as this. It's like not even close. This would basically be a completely mature cat palm. And that's not, that's not likely something to find at the, anyways, I really am going to go now. Don't forget to do the whole YouTube thing. Like the video makes a big difference for the channel and I appreciate it. And, um, the other stuff, subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, you know, new videos come out and, uh, all my social media is linked down below. I'm, I'm going to try and be more active, at least in the stories. I'm bad about posting stuff to my page. But I'm gonna try and be better, make sure that I'm at least in the stories. Okay, I have to shut up. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. What was that, pumpkin? The doggies barking? They barking at the door, pumpkin? You good morning. Uh, it's the next day. I was gonna end things, and I was like, I didn't really, there wasn't, I don't know. I just feel like this isn't complete. Hey, Tuck. Yeah, good boy, Tucker. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. Just thought I would show the before and after that the things are okay. They've been watered. It did rain. It rained a lot, so the verbenas perked back up. Same thing with this pretty anemone back here, which I don't think I ever gave a name on because, I mean, it just, because it looked terrible, so it hadn't really even occurred to me. That's Pandora Single Blue. I mean, look at how beautiful 
That is such a pretty flower on there. And I also didn't give a name with these lobelias either. These are the Techno Violent Imp lobelias. I had a whole lot of trouble finding purple lobelia last year, so I made sure when I saw these two to go ahead and snatch them right up. And there are some other spring things going on out here that I just, I just kind of, I felt like I rushed through some things. And I know some people prefer the longer Saturday videos, and they've been shorter, short. Like, 25 to 35 minutes isn't that short, but uh, just, you know, there are some more things we could talk about, so let's go for it. There are some things happening, some spring growth popping up. This is Cresta Toby. This is, I don't know if you'll be able to, nope, he stopped. He was sniffing me. It's that Cresta Palita, the wandering her purple heart plant. They usually come back every year, so they'll die back, even in the pots, but as long as these don't get too terribly cold, they do okay. But I am actually surprised to see that sprouting up. One, because it's kind of early, even though it did get pretty warm yesterday and uh, even today. It's like 8 a.m. and already 69 degrees outside. But uh, these pots were outside the majority of the winter. So, I mean, these, I think the coldest they saw this year was about 13 degrees Fahrenheit. There was plenty of snow and ice on them too. And there's still some hope in there. This is a plant, a tropical, that if you put them someplace nice and warm with a good amount of mulch, usually they'll come back for you. Probably good to zone seven. At least they've come back for me in zone six many times. And there's also some lemon coral sedum coming up in there that I didn't plant. Looks like it just fell off from a different plant and it's kind of put down a little bit of a root. That's fine, that can stay there. And ostrich ferns all popping up. Uh, this pot was sitting here to help warm the area. I forgot there was soil in it and I flipped it back over. So now there's just soil on top of mulch, which is on top of, so, so that's gonna be a mess. That's okay, it'll help break the mulch down a little bit. And then there's this ostrich fern. Look at, can you see that? Look at, look at all that. That is big and girthy. Those fiddleheads are just ready to spring open. Oh, and look, and there's some more there, and right there, and down there. This is all just since yesterday. None of this was going on yesterday. Oh, more over here. Single day of warmth, and a good amount of rain, and everything's just coming to life. What's most surprising is that even the bananas are pushing out that is not something I was expecting this time of year, especially because it's just one day of warmth. It's been decent in the 50s, but it usually takes well beyond that to warm things up, more than one day in the 80s. But it was a mild month. We had a cold snap, but I guess that cold snap wasn't enough to fully set things back. And this is going to be a big banana this year. This mulch pile is probably about three feet tall, I would say. And then there's still, there's that much stem living out of this banana. And usually if you can keep about three feet alive, you might even get some flowers out of them, which would be great. I don't really care. These are the Baju bananas. The flowers on them look cool. The bananas on them look cool, but they're not, it's not a, I guess it's edible, but you wouldn't really want to eat it because they don't taste good and they're full of seeds. So there's that but it's still it's fun to have bananas coming up out of the back oh my gosh look at that look leaves coming up out of these ones down here i don't want to actually pull the mulch back quite yet because we're still supposed to have some cold snaps there are some robins fighting with some grackles over there but um yeah i think i still need to keep things intact 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 it's been very decent the last couple of days, but like you saw at the beginning of the video, it was just snowing and at where I live, like that could still happen. We've had snow in early May before. It's very rare, but it's happened. So I'm gonna just gonna let this chill for another, I don't know, I'd say like week and then I'll be able to look at the extended forecasts again and make a better decision. I want to be able to see what things are going to look like mid to late April before I start to do too much with pulling mulch back and like moving tropical, tropical type plants outside. Oh, 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 oh. See that? That's a lot of water. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Not really. I talked about in the garden tour from a few days ago, my other hydrangea tree, the soil, you know, it gets old after a few years and it starts to compact and you lose drainage and the one from last year which is over there it just it got so incredibly full of water that it basically killed that hydrangea tree i'm not gonna let that happen with this one so 
tipped it over. It took a pull and started poking it up there inside that hole. Uh, this needs to be repotted. They both do. I'm going to keep my eyes out for um, some larger pots. These will be fine in the meantime, but I'm going to need to like dig this out and put some gravel in there and do some other stuff just to kind of be safe because I don't want anything bad to happen there. And uh, now I have a better look at what I need to cut out of the honeysuckle. So they, you know, there's two birds with one stone, I guess you could say. You having fun over there, Tobes? You look kind of cozy. You're not supposed to be on there, though. You know better. You look kind of cute laying there with all those flower petals from the magnolia. Yeah, the storm took out a lot of those flowers. That's how it goes. No big deal. The petals are pretty. It's okay. They, they only had like probably a few days left on them anyways. Oh, and we can't wrap this video up without like the most important thing. Poblano update. The tradition nobody asked for that I just make sure to throw into every single video. There they are. There's the poblanos. This is actually, I mean, it's pretty full. Look, they go, see there's three, four, five of them back there. There's six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10. And that's just like, there were already two. The other eight of them are just from like the last two and a half weeks. Very happy with the poblanos. The basil, it's still, still being a basil. It's doing its thing. Everything over here is pretty good. Really, I don't think I have been having any issues with anything. Heliconias that were in the plant hall from a few weeks ago, they're doing all right too. You know, it's just business as usual. Same old, same old. Just keeping things watered, counting down the days to get them outside. When things are this crammed together, it's usually okay for like five months. But then around the sixth month, it's like everything just goes bad. So we're at that point where it's like, all right, need to get them back outside. And it's like they're doing okay. It's just the bugs. Ugh, the bugs. There are so many bugs. Which is, you know, that's just part of gardening. It's a reason to not cram things too closely together, having some biosecurity. But then, you know, some of us, like just me, we have so many plants that you can't really spread them apart that much. And uh, just you know, that stuff happens. Just gotta stay on top of it and keep it all under control. That's all. Yeah, like I was saying, out here, it's pretty much just been business as usual. I did finally get this philodendron put up here onto a new moss pole. It, this is, it was sitting over here on the table and when the monstera the tie got knocked over that it took out the philodendron too and broke its stake and it just it's been a problem so i'm glad to have that done i mean you know it's one of those things where it takes like 30 seconds but uh it's just i hadn't gotten around to it i had the moss pole it showed up in the mail like three weeks ago and it just, it didn't make it very high up on the list. Cause the plant was okay. It was just leaning over, but it needed something more sturdy. And I made sure to get the ones where you can keep adding to them. So we can keep that climbing up. Usually I like to make my own moss poles, but this, I didn't, it's, there's just, there's enough of stuff to do. I was like, I'm just gonna order one for now. I have other moss poles I need to make for much larger plants. So with like the little ones, you know, sometimes it just kind of helps to minimize some of the work if possible with, with the little things. At least when that's an option. Oh, and I did, I repotted this bird's nest fern. I still have one other, other to repot. Hmm, talking's hard. It's early. I just woke up like right before I came out here and started doing this other part of the video. So there's, there's that. I'm on my last bottle of the final stop. This is what I've been using for the mealybugs this year and it's working. I've tried a lot of other sprays, a lot of homemade sprays and they uh, kind of worked. This one's working well, but you have to use a lot of it and I'm almost out. So I'm gonna either get online or venture out to Home Depot. Actually, I probably won't do that. I am, I'm staying at home. So I don't, I'll just, make my own spray or really just the plants that where it seems like they're starting to show up again like on this areca palm which there there's always a lot of problem with these guys with the mealybugs but uh i may if the weather keeps looking nice just pull them out i'll put them in the driveway and blast them off with high pressure i don't like to do that in here because if you blast them off then you just you just spray in the mealybugs onto the other plants so it makes more sense to get them out spray them off and bring them back in but with some of the plants that are in here they're um 
getting kind of big, so moving them in and out isn't really very practical. And this is in a pot that I really like, and it's extremely heavy, so whenever I move it, I'm like, oh gosh, don't break it, don't break it, don't break it. And that's the same thing with like the Bird of Paradise that are back there. These will actually probably be the next plants that I move out, the White Bird of Paradise, because anything, once our spring starts to get to where it looks like, the temperatures are going to be right around what would be a zone eight type of like climate, then that's when I'm like, all right, I can scoot them out. Is like our spring mimicking what would be a zone eight winter. They, even though these prefer zone nine, warmer parts of zone eight, I've seen them around and they do okay. So uh, essentially when I'm seeing that temperatures aren't going to be dropping below 40 and the highs will be at least in the seventies, then I'll scoot them on out. And they're, they are big plants but they're not very heavy so they're pretty easy to scoot in and out should the weather not behave right but i just i kind of want to get a jump start on some of that this year instead of waiting until like late april early may because when you move them out there's always a bit of a shock to the plants sometimes they'll drop some leaves and stuff like that and then you have a month of recovery i'd like to just get that done and out of the way a little bit faster this year i just like totally smacked this with my hand and i'm shocked nothing came off that's surprising. You know, the donkey's tails, they don't, they don't like to be touched. They're, they're very fall apart -y type plants. Is that the word? Delicate. Delicate plants. This one's got lots of new growth coming out the top. It's looking real wonky though, isn't it? <laughs> I think it would like to go outside. And Thyrum's looking really happy though. The Heliconia, not so much. I overwatered it. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that back. I think I'm going to move that Heliconia over to the plant shelf where there will be more intense light right on top of it. It's important with these to not let their soil stay wet for too terribly long, even though outdoors that's what you would want to do. Indoors with the cooler temperatures, it will rot them. So I need to give it a cut back. I might even lift it up out of the soil and let it, or lift it up out of the pot so that, that soil can dry because I don't want it to die back. I'm not worried about it actually dying because I at the very least can give it a heavy cut back, lift the rhizomes out, spray them down with a peroxide solution, let them dry out, replant them. But that would be a setback even though I mean it's just barely starting to break dormancy as it is. You can see it's just now starting to put up some new growth there. So that's that's what that is. I don't I don't know why I felt like you needed to know that. Oh yeah, and Rachel from gardening at Doenza why is this parlor palm all cooked up? Prune this parlor palm too. It's got some old fronds getting ready to go. Rachel, gardening at Doenza, lovely, lovely person. She did a video that's a collab uh, with myself and a lot of other plant tubers. Um, Lynn from Desert Plants of Avalon, Zane from Zane's Wild Flora, Bill from Plants and Things, My Green Pets, he's over there, uh, Astrid, she's in the vid. It's a lot. Go check it out. I'll put the link down in the description. It's an important video and show Rachel some love because she's just, like I said, she's just darling. She's a fantastic person. And the last thing, look at how, gosh, this desk. It's because I keep starting like little projects, like just like I repot something, I put a stake in something, I do a propagation and then I do a heavy watering and it's just, it's because things are getting intense over here, which is fine. That's just how things go over here. But what I was going to say is that I've had a lot of questions coming in through Instagram and in the comments of the videos, and I'm having a hard time keeping up with the questions. Uh, it's not hard keeping up with just comments and saying hi to everybody and chit chatting, but questions involve getting a little bit more in depth and having a discussion sometimes. So uh, uh, I'm going to do uh, like a Q&A next week. So any plant questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments. And uh, if you've been wondering why Jeff isn't responding, it's because he, I am screenshotting things and saving them for that video because some things just require more detail and it, I feel like it would be faster to talk about. And oftentimes there's things that might be things that other people have been wondering about. And so there's, there's that. Okay, now, like I said before, I'm actually gonna go now. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great weekend and just staying positive, hang in there and stay at home. So we're doing this twice in one video. Okay, as always, most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.